Hi guys, I have Pull Up Elizabeth here to show you guys. I'm super excited to have her because I love, love, love her. She has been on my list of dolls that I've wanted to get for a long time. She's sold out, so she's difficult to find. Uh, I have adopted her from another doll collector. And so I have her to show you guys. So when I first started doll collecting, I really wanted to get a dark themed doll like a witch or a vampire or something. And it really didn't occur to me that I would ever be able to buy a doll that was sold out because I wasn't really involved or like looking at the online doll community very much like to, in terms of wanting to buy something secondhand. And so it's only lately that I've been able to go back and get some of my dolls that I would have liked to have gotten, but I thought I would never get. So Elizabeth is one of those. She has been sold out. She's a doll from 2010. And so I can't leave a link of where to get her because you'll have to kind of look around the doll community for people who might be selling her. But she is a beauty. I absolutely love her and uh, she is a vampire so she has these really cool amazing eyes look at them they're cat like and they're blood red gorgeous so that's what her face up looks like she has very delicate eyebrows and very pretty but not too made up eyes so she just has some crease lines above her eye and lots and lots of eyelashes drawn on and I really love the I love it when they draw eyelashes around the upper they often put eyelashes down here but I really love this look it's one of my favorite looks for a doll and of course she has those amazing eye chips I know my video lights are sort of getting in the way of you seeing them but hopefully you can see them okay her mouth is drawn such that, I mean, all the dolls have the same face mold, so uh, so they're the same lips as other dolls, but the way that they're painted, it looks like her mouth is slightly open. There's a black kind of line in the crease that makes it look a little bit like her mouth is open or just that she's got something, maybe she's got blood in her lips or something, blood in her mouth. And they are a very pale shade of gray, almost a pinky tone right in here. And they're glossed. So she has a very pale skin. She has a gray, gray undertone like the other, uh, other worldly dolls that I have. So she has the same skin tone as Wilhelmina and Midnight Velvet. But uh, she does have lots of blushing especially around her eyes here that has a bit of a pink a pinkish brown hue right in through here and I'm not too sure if she has blushing on her cheeks or if she's just pale if she does it's a gray blushing she might have some shading and as I mentioned she's got those very delicate pretty eyebrows I love that her eyebrows aren't too too evil looking they're they're very nice. I like them. So that's her face up. One of the things that originally made me think I might not want Elizabeth, this was several years ago, was her hair color. To me the fact that she's blonde doesn't really fit with a vampire. I always think of vampires as being brunettes for some reason. I know there are plenty of vampires in literature and in movies that are blondes, but for some reason just that typical, that stereotype of a black haired, long black hair on a vampire, on a female vampire, just kind of was my idea of a vampire. So I wasn't entirely sure about her hair, but now that I have her and actually looking at some owner pics, which is the reason that I bought her, um, I really realized that I love the blonde hair. I love that it's this rich almost like a goldenrod color of of yellow and it's it's very pretty and it really warms her up and gives it's I guess I like that it's unexpected at least for me it's unexpected because as I said I always think of vampires as having black hair so this is what her wig looks like it is a it feels it has like a slightly oily it's not oily I've had another doll in a different brand of dolls that had very oily hair it's not like that at all um, but 
it's it's got like a plasticky feeling to it that's sort of it's it's kind of like it's in clumps instead of falling as individual hairs you know um, that's not necessarily a bad thing I think it's nice that her hair kind of stays together like this automatically I ran my toothbrush through the bottom part of it it was a little bit frizzy and you can see that it smoothed out quite nicely I should have shown you a before and after but it's quite uh, it's quite nice now there's a couple of little tangles in it right there um, but yeah it smooths out quite nicely with the toothbrush And it's very shiny and pretty, and uh, I'm hoping that I can keep it. I like this elaborate hair style with the braids that kind of come up around, and then a poofy part in the back, which is supported. It's got something under there keeping it like that. And then it comes together in the back in this really neat ponytail. I like that it's very neat and orderly. She has a very structured hairdo, which I really like. So that is the doll herself. Her body is, of course, it's a type 4 body. And she has painted fingernails, which she's my first doll to have painted fingernails. I know that some Bloody Red Hood dolls had painted nails, but mine did not. So there's that. Or at least I think that some Bloody Red Hood dolls had painted nails. Uh, that's what it seems like when I was looking at Bloody Red Hood when I first bought her and I was surprised that, she, that mine did not, but I guess it was a different run. So I'm going to talk about her outfit here. When I first purchased her from the other doll collector, my idea was that I would get a different dress for her because although I, her dress is beautiful, I could tell in the photos that it would be beautiful. Uh, I kind of like the idea again of having her wear like a really fitted um, sexy dress. And uh, now that I have her, I really like her dress too. So I might just keep her in this dress for, for a little while. My plan was to immediately change her into something kind of like fitted and long and almost like um, Morticia Adams type of a dress, but not quite as, not quite as extreme as Morticia's. Uh, but anyhow, maybe something kind of like modern and black and sexy. But I'm going to leave her in this for now because I really love the quality of this of this dress and I'll show it to you in a second. So first I'll show you that she comes with uh, a necklace, a beaded necklace that just kind of is double looped around her neck. It has a, a lobster claw for taking it off and on. And then she has this really pretty cameo, right, that just kind of dangles like that. It's just sewn onto the rest of her dress. It's really pretty. And then she has this, it's, it looks like a chain that's linked all the way around the top of the bodice of the dress. It goes all the way to the back. Sorry, her sleeves are kind of getting in the way like that. And it seems to be made out of plastic to me. I can't quite tell for sure. And then it has this really pretty lace work in black up here. And then these sleeves seem to be attached to the dress. And there is some staining on her body from the dress. So we've got a little bit of yellow here in her armpit. And a lot of times dolls that have black dresses or bright or like red will have um, some staining on them. So I was expecting that. There's a little bit of staining right there as well. Uh, and then we have this sash type of thing that I think comes off. Yeah, it does. It's Velcroed on with a little square of Velcro. And so I'm going to take it off. I like to keep Velcro away from their hair because it can make their hair pretty frizzy. So this is just a pink sash with black lacy trim on it and the two pieces of velcro to hold it in place and then this ribbony flower embellishment on it. So it goes like that around her waist. It's very pretty and this is what she looks like. Oh she's so pretty! So her dress is really fitted through here. There is a 
a gold sparkly layer underneath and then all kinds of lace layered on top of it. As I said, it's very fitted and these sleeves are sheer and poofy with these gold elasticy parts to make them puff in and out like that. And then there's this dangly part that's has like an unfinished um, ravelly look. Ravelly, that's not the word I'm looking for, but uh, tattered look, I guess. And of course the other sleeve is exactly the same. And then the skirt, so the dress I think is one piece. Let me check and see. Yeah, it is all one piece and it closes in the back with Velcro. As you see, I'm not going to take it off of her. Um, so the skirt has panels of this pink, I don't know what this is, maybe taffeta? I don't know, I'm kind of just making stuff up as I go. When I think of taffeta, this is what I think of, but I'm not a sewing person, so I don't really know the names of the fabrics. Then there's a panel of pink satin with a soft black lace overlay, and this is a very soft, nice, it, lace. It's not the hard uh, kind that I don't like very much. It just alternates between the burgundy type of taffeta fabric and then the panels of pink, light pink satin with a black lace overlay. And then the whole skirt is trimmed at the bottom with this nylon black lace. That's not such a nice soft lace as this. It's more of a regular nylon lace. The back of the dress is pretty much the same as the front of the dress. There's no bow or anything, which is good. Don't want her to be too dolled up. I want her to have a real elegant look. Then she also comes with a veil that I'm not entire in this headpiece, and it looks like the veil might have been attached to the headpiece because there are little pieces of, th of thread on the clip that the headpiece is attached to. So the headpiece is a piece of metal that it looks like it was a, a medallion that's been kind of bent up like that. And then I think what you could do is you could kind of, I don't know, attach it something like this and like this. And I think she would look kind of cute like that. I am not going to do that because I really don't want to mess up her hair here. It's so beautiful and smooth. I don't want to stick anything in it that might wreck it. And I'm not a huge fan of the veil look, but then of course you could also pull it over her face like this if you were wearing it like that. And she would look pretty creepy like that too. So as I said, I'm not going to be putting this on her because I like her without it. Then she comes with a stand, a red stand, which I think is quite appropriate, blood red stand. And let's look under her dress. So what does she come with underneath? She comes with a little crinoline. I think that's what this is called. It's like a very stiff, crinkly piece of tulle that basically helps her skirt to puff out. And then she comes with a pair of bloomers, really cute shorts. They're black, they're really cute. I love them, I love bloomers. They're so cute. And I'm messing up her hair, so let me take a minute to smooth it all down again. And then she comes with these really beautiful shoes that her dress is so long that you'll never see them but they're really, really cute. I love them. I love the style. They're very suiting to her or what I have in mind for her anyways. I'm sure they're too big because they always are. They're super cute. Oh, I didn't show you her eye lids yet. They're really awesome. They're pink. I thought it would have been cool if they were burgundy. Pink is a little unexpected, especially this like bright bubblegum pink. I guess they sort of match with the pink on her dress. Yeah, they match the, the dress. I would like them better if they were burgundy, but that's okay. They kind of clash with her eyes. 
All right, so there she is. The other thing about her is that she comes with little teeth. She comes with uh, six little white teeth and four little red teeth. That would, I guess, be covered in blood. And a lot of people don't put the teeth on her. I am going to try putting them on because I just love the idea of her having teeth. <laughs> I just like it. Um, yeah, it just makes it obvious that she's a vampire to people who maybe aren't doll collectors who might not know. Uh, I think it'll make her look a little bit creepier. It comes with double-sided tape to put on, to put them on, but I'm not convinced that I want to do that. I'm going to use some Elmer's glue because that's what I use for facial piercings and I know that Elmer's glue doesn't leave any stains on anything so I'm going to put them on with that and then I will show you the finished product when she's all ready. So I have this coffin for Elizabeth that is uh, her sleeping place, her resting place, and it's actually a wine gift box from just from the gift card store at the mall and I bought this thinking and hoping that a pull-up would fit in it hoping that pull-up Elizabeth would fit in it and ah! so here she is with her teeth I just glued them on with Elmer's glue because I thought it would be a little bit less tricky than trying to cut tiny teeny weeny pieces of double sided tape. And I've used Elmer's glue on faces before for piercing so I'm hoping that it will hold up. It's the kind of thing that is temporary, you can take it off and just wipe off the glue residue and she's good to go. It's just like she never even had teeth. So I'm going to put her up in the witch's area of my display area and I'll show you some pictures. So I just wanted to show you where Elizabeth is going to live. I'm keeping her name Elizabeth and uh, I have her here on my shelf of otherworldly dolls. I have Eve here who's sitting on the couch and she has some little creepy things beside her, a little skull and a little stuffy and there's a skull on the wall behind her. There is a witch's brew here and I have this, this is just a Halloween decoration, it's a, it's a gray net and I wanted it to look kind of like uh, the, br the brew is sort of um, like there's fog or steam coming out of it and then it's kind of going along the, along the floor. And uh, that's just a little witch's cauldron from the dollar store. It was filled with candy. I actually threw the candy away because it was really horrible candy. But it was I really just bought it for the little plastic <laughs> container it came in. Then we have Paige here. And Paige looks like she's casting a spell. And then we have Elizabeth in her coffin. And she has, I put her hand so that you could see her nail polish because I really like her nail polish. And although she would look really creepy laying there, kind of leaning back with her eyes closed, her eyes are so creepy I wanted to keep them open. So for now they're open. And then I have Ren here who is my doll, uh, Lila. And she is playing with a little Ouija board. It's just the lid from a container of mints I got from the Halloween store. She has a little um, a little bow in her hair now and of course I've changed her wig. I haven't changed her eye chips yet into the creepy ghosty eyes. I, I made them and I'm not entirely sure that I'm gonna like them. I guess I just have to try them to see if I'm gonna like them. And then there's some eyeballs and a little other little stuffy down there by, by Ren's feet. So this is where Elizabeth and the other girls are going to live, so thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this sort of review of uh, Pull-Up Elizabeth. She's a beauty. I love her. Uh, highly recommend if you can get your hands on this doll. I highly recommend her. She's beautiful. Her stock is beautiful, and she's just a very unique and creepy doll. I love her so much. Thanks for watching.